AI agents are one of the hottest use cases for AI right now. This is partly because they're a great example of composing currently existing technologies, using tools like speech to text to pull many modalities together into a central reasoning and action engine powered by LLMs. The flexibility and generality of AI agents means they have potential use cases in many industries, but they have a particular potential to transform real-time experiences. Being able to delegate tasks to an AI agent that can understand and act on your commands in real time is a game changer. Whether you're in a business meeting asking it to schedule a follow-up call, or your live streamer asking an agent to set up a poll in your chat. In this video, we're gonna show you how to build an AI agent to perform real-time speech to text in your web application. Building performant real-time applications is notoriously difficult. We'll be using LiveKit to make this easier, which is a platform for building real-time audio and video applications that abstracts away many of these messy details. Additionally, LiveKit provides a flexible agent system, which allows you to rapidly build AI agents and incorporate them into your application. Here's how LiveKit works. At the core of a LiveKit application is a LiveKit server. Users, called participants, connect to the server and join a real-time session, which is called a room. Participants can then publish streams of data, called tracks, to the room, as well as subscribe to tracks published by other users. These tracks are commonly audio or video streams, but any arbitrary data stream will do. And by centralizing all of the data streams in one place and forwarding them only to who needs them, LiveKit can provide low latency, high quality real-time communication. In order to build your real-time application, you'll need three essential components. First, you'll need a LiveKit server, which manages the real-time session. Second, you'll need a front-end application that your users will interact with. And third, you'll need an AI agent that will connect to the server and transcribe incoming audio streams. Let's start by setting up the LiveKit server. LiveKit is open source, which means you can self-host your own LiveKit server. This is a great option if you want full control over your infrastructure. In this tutorial, we'll use LiveKit Cloud, which is a hosted version of LiveKit that's managed by the LiveKit team. This will make it easy for us to get up and running quickly, and it's free for small applications. Go to livekit.io and sign up for a free account. You'll be met with a page that prompts you to create your first app. Name your app Streaming STT and click Continue. After answering a few questions about your use case, you'll be taken to the dashboard for your app. Your dashboard shows information about your LiveKit project, which is essentially a management layer for your LiveKit server. You can find usage information, active sessions, as well as what we're interested in, which is the server URL and API keys. Go to Settings, Keys, and you'll see the default API key that was initialized when you created your project. In a terminal, create a project directory and navigate into it. Inside your project directory, Create a .m file to store the credentials for your application, and add the following text. Back on the keys page in your LiveKit dashboard, click the default API key for your app. This will display a pop-up modal where you can copy each of the values and paste them into your .m file. Note that you'll need to click to reveal your secret key. Your .m file should now look something like this. Note that your .m file contains your application credentials, so make sure to keep it secure and never commit it to source control. Now that our server is set up, we can move on to building the front-end application. LiveKit has a range of SDKs that make it easy to build in any environment. In our case, we'll use the LiveKit Agents Playground, which is a web application that lets you easily test the agent system. Using this web application will allow us to quickly test out our speech-to-text agent that we'll build later. The AI Agents Playground is open source, so feel free to read through the code for inspiration when you're building your own project. Additionally, we don't even have to set up the Agents Playground ourselves. LiveKit has a hosted version that you can use. Go to agentsplayground.livekit.io and you will either be automatically signed in or met with a prompt to connect to LiveKit Cloud. Sign in if prompted and then click on the Streaming STT project to connect to it. You'll be taken to the Agents Playground, which is connected to the LiveKit server for your Streaming STT project. On the right, you'll see the ID of the room you are connected to as well as your own participant ID. You can disconnect for now by clicking on the button on the top right. It's time to build our speech-to-text agent. Before we start writing code, you'll need to get an Assembly AI API key. You can get one by following the link in the description. The free offering currently includes over 400 hours of asynchronous speech-to-text as well as access to audio intelligence models, but it doesn't yet include streaming speech-to-text, so you'll need to set up billing before you continue. Once you've done so, you can find the API key on the front page of your dashboard. Copy it and paste it into your .m file. Now we're ready to start coding. You'll need to have Python installed on your system if you don't already, so go do that first if you haven't already. Back in your project directory, create a virtual environment. You can use the appropriate commands for your system as listed here. Next, install the required packages. This command installs the LiveKit Python SDK, the Assembly AI plugin for LiveKit, and Python.env, which we'll use to load our environment variables from the .env file. Now it's time to build the agent, which is based on an example from the LiveKit examples repository. 
create a new file in your project directory called stt agent and add the following code. We start with our imports, load our environment variables, and then instantiate a logger for our agent. Now we can move on to writing the main agent code. We start by defining an entry point function, which is executed when the agent is connected to the room. The entry point function is an asynchronous function that accepts a job context. To start, we just log a message when the transcriber is connected to the room and instantiate an assemblyai.stt object. This object is responsible for handling the speech to text and it satisfies the LiveKit agent's stt.stt interface. Next, still within the entry point function, we define an inner function that tells the agent what to do when it subscribes to a new track. The decorator indicates to what event this function should be bound, in this case, track subscription. The function creates a new asynchronous task that transcribes the audio track using the transcribe track function that we'll add next. Add the following inner function to your entry point function. This function first creates an audio stream object from the track and then creates an assembly AI speech stream object using the dot stream method of our assembly AI.stt object. The speech stream object represents the bilateral communication stream between your LiveKit agent and assembly AI. Audio segments are forwarded to assembly AI and transcripts are received. Next, the function creates an stt segments forwarder object, which is responsible for forwarding the transcripts to the room so they can be displayed on the front end. To transcribe the track, we need to do two things in parallel. First, we need to receive the audio track from the LiveKit server and send it to Assembly AI for transcription. And second, we need to receive the response transcript from Assembly AI and forward it back to the LiveKit server. We do this using the asyncio.gather function, which runs these two tasks in parallel. We will define these tasks next. First, we define handle audio input. Add the following inner function to the entry point function. This function listens for audio frames from the audio stream object and pushes them to the speech stream object. The audio stream object is an asynchronous generator that yields audio frames from the subscribed track, which we forward to assembly AI using the push frame method of the STT stream. Now add this inner function to the entry point function. This function does the converse of the previous function. It listens for speech events from the speech stream object and forwards them to the STT segments forwarder object which in turn forwards them to the LiveKit server. When it receives a final transcript event, it prints the transcript to the console. You can also add additional logic to, for example, print out interim transcripts. You can learn about the difference between interim or partial transcripts and final transcripts in this section of our blog on transcribing Twilio in real time. Finally, add the following line to the entry point function at its root level to connect to the LiveKit room and automatically subscribe to any published tracks. So, to summarize, the entry point function is connected when the agent connects to the LiveKit room. The agent automatically subscribes to every audio track published to the room. For each of these tracks, the agent then creates an asynchronous task which simultaneously, one, pushes audio frames to the assembly AI speech to text stream, and then two, receives transcription events from the assembly AI speech to text stream, prints them to the agent server console if they're final transcripts, and then forwards them to the LiveKit room so they can be sent to participants, in our case to power the chat feature on the front end. So your entry point function should now look like this. Finally, we define the main loop of our agent, which is responsible for connecting to the LiveKit room and running the entry point function. Add the following code to your stt-agent.py file. When the script is run, we use LiveKit's cli.runapp method to run the agent, specifying the entry point function as the entry point for the agent. Now it's time to run the application. Go back to the agent's playground in your browser and click connect. Remember, the playground is connected to your LiveKit project. Now go into your terminal and start the agent with this command, ensuring the virtual environment you created earlier is active. The agent connects to your LiveKit project using the credentials in your .m file. In the playground, you'll see the agent connected status change from false to true after starting your agent. Begin speaking and you'll see your speech transcribed in real time. After you complete a sentence, it will be punctuated and formatted, and then a new line will be started for the next sentence in the chat box on the playground. In the terminal where your agent is running, you'll see only the final punctuated and formatted utterances printed because this is the behavior we defined in our stt-agent.py file. And that's everything. You've successfully built a real-time speech-to-text agent for your LiveKit application. Remember, you can self-host any part of this application, including the LiveKit server and the LiveKit frontend. Check out the LiveKit docs for more information on building LiveKit applications and working with agents. Otherwise, you can feel free to check out our blog or our YouTube video for other videos, like this video on building a chatbot in Python using Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Here's a quick demo of the application we're going to be building. 
it first takes in an audio or video file. In this case, I'm using an audio recording of a phone call. 